Jane Dunwald. Welcome to my YouTube channel, or welcome back, I hope. And today I'd like to show you how to use clear glue, in this case Elmer's. I'm not sure there is any other variety, but a glue that is not waterproof with India ink. This becomes the resist. It's a really interesting way to draw and get some patterns that you can either use for collage or for other mixed media applications, or even as originals for Thermofax designs. So let me show you how I do this. Okay, the first part is very straightforward. I'm using the glue directly out of the bottle, and I'm just gonna draw a series of rings. You can literally draw anything you can think of as long as you can manage to draw it with the nozzle that's on the bottle. There are some other ways you could apply it though too. You could pour some of the glue out into a plate and then you could use a brush to stencil it onto your watercolor paper. And you do want to use watercolor paper for this because this is going to be immersed in water for a little while and you don't want the paper to disintegrate. I could use a brush and put it on rubber stamps and do some stamping with it. And I also could put it through a Thermofax. In other words, this glue could be screen printed through a Thermofax. And that's worth trying. Now, once the glue's been applied to the watercolor paper, this has to dry. Depends on how thick the, the glue actually is, how long you'll need to leave it to dry. Sometimes you have to leave it overnight because it's pretty thick. I don't know whether you can see, like right here, that's a pretty thick one. They got thinner as I went along. But you wanna make sure all of the glue is completely dry. So I would say it, it, that's never gonna happen in an hour. It's probably gonna take longer than that. So go find something else to do and then come back to it and add the India ink when it's completely dry. That's what I'm gonna do next. Now I waited for the glue to dry on the sample that I prepared and I'm about to add the India ink. When I choose India ink, I want it to be real India ink, which is carbon-based. If I choose an acrylic ink, it may bond to the glue and then I'm not gonna be able to get the effect that I want. So this is one of those times when you really wanna be careful that you're buying the right product so it does what you intend for it to do. I buy India ink online from an online art supply store. There are several of them that sell it. That way you can get a bigger bottle like this, which is pretty much a lifetime supply, but it's less expensive this way than to buy the tiny little, I think Higgins is the, the brand that we all probably grew up with, or many of us grew up with, that's only about that big and a little bit pricey. So look for one like this. This happens to be Handy Art Black Velvet Waterproof Ink. So you want to look for something like that. Okie doke. Let's put the ink on and see what happens. I'm just going to squirt a little bit of ink out on the surface of the paper and then use a brush to spread it out. I can paint all the way to the edges if I want my design to be as large as the entire watercolor paper. A lot of the time, I crop after it dries, and I don't really need that white edge, so why waste money painting ink all the way to the edge? So I wanna paint that on. It'll still be shiny while it's wet, and as it dries, which should only take 30 or 40 minutes, as it dries, it'll turn matte, and that's how you'll know that it's dry and you're ready to proceed to the step of putting it in the water. Okay, so this is dry. I'm gonna put it under the running water, kind of like that until all of the glue dissolves, and then my design will be revealed, and I'll clean that up a little bit, and I'll bring it back and show it to you at the table. Okay, I put a towel down on my work table to keep it dry. Here's my print. You can see that's really strong, high contrast. It's pretty great. I'm gonna fold up the towel and blot it a little bit just to dry it a little bit. And then I can just leave this on a table to dry or I can hang it on a clothesline, you know, whatever. So that's how neat it looks when it's finished. And you can essentially, anything you can draw, like I said earlier, you can do using this particular technique. Get some really nice high contrast design elements that you can either use just exactly the way they are or you can incorporate them into some other thing that you're working on with mixed media. Or you could literally scan it Oh gosh, there's so many things you could do with it. Scan it, put it on spoon flour, scan it, turn it into a silk screen, scan it, manipulate it on your iPad. That part's for you to figure out. I hope you have fun with it and I hope you've enjoyed this. And if you did, 
please subscribe to my channel. If you've got any questions, you can ask them down below.